Welcome to the Iglesia Ni Cristo, a Christian religion whose primary purpose is to serve and worship God based on His teachings in the Bible. The Iglesia Ni Cristo is an independent church that is neither affiliated with any federation of other churches nor itself an assembly of smaller religious bodies. It is not a denomination or sect, but a church that is for everyone who will heed the call of God and embrace its faith. Do you know the Iglesia de Cristo? Does Christ know the Church of Christ? Is this church His church? Does Christ acknowledge the members of this church as His? Well, that's what we'll be talking about today. I'm Jenny Martin and you're watching the Iglesia de Cristo International Edition. Dear friends, joining us this week are Brother Rod Bruno in Toronto, Canada, Brother Bernard Daos in San Francisco, California, and Brother Philip Velasquez in London, England. Good day to you, brothers, and thank you for joining us in our discussion. Thank you, Brother Johnny. Hello, Brother Johnny. You know, brothers and dear friends, all of us who are members of this church know that July 27, 2017 marks the 103rd anniversary of the Iglesia de Cristo that appeared here in the Philippines. The Church of Christ has a membership comprising 114 nationalities, maintains about 6,000 congregations and missions in more than 130 countries and territories in all the inhabited continents of the world. 103 years ago, this church was registered with the Philippine government by Brother Felix Manalo, whom we believe in as God's messenger in these last days. Dear friends, this is what CNN Philippines had reported on the Iglesia de Cristo. It all started in a worker's quarter of a construction firm at Punta Santa Ana, Manila in 1914. Felix Manalo, with the permission of his friend, Apolinario Ramos, held his first religious meeting with a handful of people in attendance. Not long after, the flock grew. The first 14 converts of Iglesia de Cristo were baptized through immersion by Manalo at the Santa Ana portion of the Pasig River. Felix Manalo registered the Iglesia de Cristo as a corporation with the Philippine government on July 27, 1914, that coincided with the First World War. One hundred years later, the Iglesia de Cristo now has millions of members in more than a hundred countries and nationalities. The INC is currently led by Executive Minister Eduardo Manalo, the grandson of Felix Manalo. Patricia De Leon, CNN Philippines. All right, brothers, after watching that, what are the first things that come to mind? Brother Philip, if we could begin with you, please. Well, you can see, brother, this major uh, news network, you know, known all around the world, knows about the Iglesia de Cristo and our late brother Felix why Manalo? It also reported about the, um, the Church of Christ, the Iglesia de Cristo, being registered with the Philippine government in 1914 by our late brother Felix Y. Manalo. And it speaks also of um, how it has grown into literally millions um, in just 100 years. Uh, may I interject also, brothers, at this time, uh, the church continues to march on and more and more people, not only in the Philippines, but also in various parts of the globe, are learning about the Iglesia de Cristo. They're not only learning about this church, but they're also joining it. Thus, the Church of Christ has a truly international membership that keeps on growing. And as we prepare to commemorate the 103rd anniversary, it's important to note that we do not take any of the glory we do not take any of the credit for the successes that the church has experienced in all its spiritual endeavors. Our executive minister, Brother Eduardo Manalo, always teaches us and leads us in giving the praise and honor back to the Lord God who grants success to the Church of Christ. And we continue to press onwards to further victories in all the works of the Church of Christ. The thing is, Brother Bernard, because um, some people will say, yep, they, they, they've recognized uh, the successes of the church, how the church has remained united in all its activities in the past 103 years, how it's experienced growth 
and progress, but they will also cite like other religious groups. They, they've probably had some kind of success as well and enjoyed growth. Um, in their works of uh, in, in their in their evangelical works, so this might lead other people to maybe draw the conclusion that all churches are the same anyway. What makes your church, the Iglesia Ni Cristo, so different from all the other churches? And that's an interesting point you make there, Brother Philip. However, should others draw that conclusion? Should they interpret that to mean that all these churches and religious groups are the same? and are all recognized by Christ? Dear friends, amidst the many churches and religious organizations in the world, no matter how big or small they are, why are we sure that our Lord Jesus Christ does recognize the Iglesia Ni Cristo and its members as being His? To answer that, let's begin with this question. During the time of Christ and the Apostles, who were the ones whom Christ recognized as being His or belonging to Him? Brother Rod, if we could begin with you, please. Let me begin by reading in the book of John, chapter 10, verse 27, where our Lord's words are recorded here saying, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Speaking here in this verse, is our Lord Jesus Christ. How does He speak of the ones whom He knows or recognizes as being His, as belonging to Him? He said, My sheep, I know them. Who are the ones whom He knows as His sheep? He said, My sheep hear My voice, and they follow Me. Thus, the ones who are the true sheep of Christ are the ones who hear the voice of Christ and follow Christ. See, this is the thing, Brother Rod, you, you brought up a good point there, because a lot of people claim that they are the sheep of our Lord Jesus Christ, and that our Lord Jesus Christ recognizes them. But as you've read, if they do not follow Christ, their claim is an empty one. They're not really the sheep of Jesus Christ, and Christ definitely does not know them. Beloved brethren, it's clear that the true sheep they follow, they obey our Lord Jesus Christ. They obey the teachings that Christ teaches. And they do not simply claim to be of Christ, to know Him or to call upon His name. So let's be clear about this. If there is no obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ, then they are not truly His sheep. That's an interesting point, Brother Bernard. Now, Brother Philip, I'm going to go to you with this question. Uh, the Bible shown us that the ones whom Christ knows as his sheep are the ones who obey him. Christ's sheep obey Christ's teachings. Now, this is the question. What is one of the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ that the sheep of Christ have followed? Very good question, brother. And the answer can be found here in John 10 and 9. This is what our Lord Jesus Christ teaches regarding what his sheep have uh, followed regarding his command. He said, I am the door. Anyone who comes into the fold through me will be safe. The one who is speaking here is our Lord Jesus Christ. What is it that he teaches here, which has been followed by the ones whom he knows or he recognizes as his sheep? They followed his instruction to enter into him, to be a part of the fold. So we read also the blessing that will be received by those whom Christ recognizes because they entered into the fold, which was the instruction of our Lord Jesus Christ. They will receive salvation. They will be saved come the day of judgment. All right, Brother Bernard, the Holy Scriptures show, uh, this is not opinion, it's what the Bible says. The Holy Scriptures show that the true sheep of Christ are inside the fold or flock and that they are the ones promised salvation. But here's the question for you. What is the flock wherein the sheep of Christ are found? Well, Brother Johnny, for that answer, let's go back to the Bible and please listen to the teaching of the apostles as recorded here in the book of Acts, chapter 20 and verse 28. This is what we can read. Take heed therefore to yourselves and to all the flock, 
over which the Holy Spirit has appointed you overseers to feed the church of Christ, which he has purchased with his blood, which is the flock or the fold wherein the sheep of our Lord Jesus Christ are found. The Bible is clear. It is the church of Christ. According to the apostles, take heed, take care to yourself and the flock, feed the church of Christ. Therefore, the biblical teaching is clear, brothers, that those who have obeyed the voice of our Lord Jesus Christ, those who have entered into the fold or the flock, they are the members of the church of Christ. Thus, it is the members of the church of Christ whom the Lord Jesus Christ truly recognizes as his. It is the members of the church of Christ whom the Lord Jesus Christ recognizes as his sheep and to those he has promised salvation. The Bible has shown us that to be the sheep of Christ, people need to be in the church of Christ. The people who are in the church of Christ that Christ built in Jerusalem and that the apostles administered in the first century were indeed the sheep of Christ. Christ recognized the members of the first century church of Christ as being his sheep then. Now, brothers and dear viewers, as we've studied before, the first century church of Christ fell in the way of apostasy. It was apostatized. Now, though that happened to the first century church of Christ, does that mean that no one else is recognized by Christ as being his sheep? What is the proof that besides the flock or the church of Christ in the first century, there are other sheep whom Christ also knows or recognizes as being his? Well, that's up next on the Iglesia de Cristo International Edition. Don't go away. Welcome back, everyone, to the Iglesia de Cristo International Edition. In this program, we want to help others around the world know or learn more about the Iglesia de Cristo, the Church of Christ. So before we continue with our discussion, we invite you to watch this video. After 160 years of Sunday Masses, the bells at St. Mary's Church will never ring again. In Another local church is closing its doors for good. News headlines like these are more common than ever. The Catholic Church in the U.S. is set to close soon. But the Church of Christ is garnering a different type of headline. Recently, the Church of Christ has purchased several properties and dedicated new houses of worship to God all over the world. We don't practice tithing. We don't join business ventures and we don't rely on bank loans. We do, however, follow the biblical command about Christian giving, because in the Church of Christ, the Bible is the true basis of our faith, and the Bible inspires us to place importance on humanity. Members of a church in Fremont provided a variety of free services to their community today. The church held a Neighborhood Appreciation Day. It offers everything from clothing giveaways to medical screenings. The effort today was part of a nationwide program to help families during challenging economic times. The Church of Christ, this particular church, when you guys came in, we loved it. It was it empowered a lot of people here and brought about a lot of joy and, and gratefulness. Having a group like yours come in and make a donation to my community, it could help somebody someday to see God's love. It's just overwhelmed my heart, the, the amount of people that are willing to come in and, and to, to help with not, not, knowing, not knowing the people here, but just knowing that they're God's children. It's fantastic. I mean, this is, this, is, this is what it's all about. I mean, it's a great feeling. It's a warm feeling to have people come out and, and like I said, donate their time, their effort to, uh, to clean up uh, such a problem. We believe in reaching out to our fellow men through our outreach programs in various parts of the world, like the INC Giving Project and the International Aid for Humanity Program. It's an effort not only recognized by the very individuals it serves, but has even set world records in the process.
While almost all Christian professing religions have started from the West and made their way to the East, the Iglesia Ni Cristo is different. It began in a developing country and progressed to the West, with over 5,000 congregations worldwide in nearly 100 countries and territories, we believe that all the victories and triumphs of the Iglesia Ni Cristo can only be attributed to one thing, that the hand of God is in all of this. What else do we believe in? Find out now. All right, brothers, we watched a wonderful video uh, for the brethren who are in the church and even for our friends who are not yet inside the church that really helps everyone to have a broader understanding about the Iglesia de Cristo or the Church of Christ. Now, brothers, here's a question. What is the first thing, maybe Brother uh, Bernard, we could go with you first. What is the first thing you tell someone who doesn't really know anything about the Iglesia de Cristo? Well, Brother Johnny, as the video pointed out, the world is experiencing what is called a religious recession, maybe even, as some may say, a religious depression, because we can see that churches are closing down, the membership in other religious religions are dwindling. However, as we talk to and tell people about the Iglesia de Cristo or the Church of Christ, we can see the trend going in another direction, success after success, victory after victory, and once again, we do not take any of the glory or credit for ourselves, but we firmly believe that God is the one granting all of these successes and victories to the Church of Christ. Brother Philip, uh, I have a question for you. Um, mm -hmm. You know what's been taking place there in uh, your part of the world? Uh, we can see what's been happening in the news. But when people learn about the Iglesia de Cristo, the Church of Christ, uh, for the first time, they've learned about it, uh, what reactions have you seen from our friends who've come to discover the Iglesia de Cristo, the Church of Christ? Well, um, they're surprised on the uh, number of houses of worship we have, the number of uh, local congregations we have throughout the country, and also the number of brethren we have. When, when they do come to attend a, a worship service, they'll come in there expecting to see maybe 10, 20 people, one or two rows, but they see these houses of worship filled with people. And not just only old people, as you see in many churches here, but, uh, you know, alive with youth, you know, who are, uh, you know, uh, dedicated in, in, uh, in serving our Almighty God. And that's something very rare, especially here in the United Kingdom. Brother Rod, uh, for those who live there in, uh, in, the, in Canada, in your area, uh, what would you like to say to someone who would be interested in religion but really doesn't know anything about the Iglesia de Cristo? I would say go to the Iglesia de Cristo website, which I'm sure Brother Johnny knows by heart and can announce to you after I'm finished speaking. Find out the nearest congregation to you and go there. Because just like our brothers mentioned, people are surprised when they meet the church for the first time. They, a lot of them just have no idea of what to expect. But of all those things that surprise people, the most surprising to the most of the people that I have met is how the church asks the question and reads the answer from the Holy Bible. Question, answer. That is the most impressive thing that most of the people see with regards to the beloved Iglesia Ni Cristo. Now, dear viewers, regarding the websites of the Iglesia Ni Cristo, you can check out iglesianicristo.net or incmedia.org. You can learn many things about the Church of Christ or the Iglesia Ni Cristo. Now, in the first part of this program, uh, we learn from the Bible. You know, Brother Rod made a very interesting point. We simply ask the question, let the Bible give the answer. And we learn from the Bible that the ones whom Christ knows as His sheep are the members of the Church of Christ, who are the ones who obeyed His teaching to come into the fold through Him. In the first century, Christ's sheep were the members of the first century Church of Christ. But that church fell into apostasy and did not remain as an organization that belonged to the Lord. Though that happened to the first century Church of Christ, Brother Rod, here's the question we'd like to ask. Does that mean that no one else 
is recognized by Christ as his sheep, as belonging to him? Again, Brother Johnny, allow me to read to you the answer to that question from the Holy Scriptures here in the book of John, chapter 10, this time verse 16. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Though the first century Church of Christ was apostatized, does that mean that no one else is recognized by Christ as his sheep? As belonging to him? No, it does not. Why are we sure? Let us examine closely what this verse says. The one who is speaking here is none other again than our Lord Jesus Christ. What does Christ make? mention of. He said, this fold. What does he refer to by the words, this fold? To the church that he built or founded during his time on earth or the first century of the Christian era, which he called, based on Matthew 16, 18, my church, and which the apostles called the church of Christ based again on the Holy Scriptures, Acts 20, 28, especially from the Lambson translation of the Bible. The members of the church were recognized by Christ as his sheep then. There's a very important part of that prophetic pronouncement of our Lord Jesus Christ, because the Lord Jesus said, and other sheep I have which are not of this fold. So what does that statement prove? It proves that besides the flock, or besides the church of Christ in the first century, there are other sheep that also belong to our Lord Jesus Christ. He also recognizes them as His. So, if one would be counted among the other sheep, then we are counted among the people who belong to our Lord Jesus Christ. He refers to, it, to them as His other sheep, but yet they are still His. So, obviously, the question here is, who are the other sheep who belong to our Lord Jesus Christ? But before we get to that, Brother Philip, here's the question. Why are the ones whom Christ prophesied about in John 10, 16, why are they called by Him as His other sheep? Why are they other sheep? Well, brother, we can get the answer from uh, Romans 9, 24. This will make it clearer for for all of us. We are the ones God has called. We don't come only from the Jews, but we also come from the Gentiles. So your question was, why does Christ call, uh, why does Christ call the ones whom he prophesied, prophesied about in John 10, 16, his other sheep? Because they didn't belong to those who were called to be his sheep during Christ's time and the time of the apostles. The other sheep of our Lord Jesus Christ are not the sheep during the time of the church of Christ in the first century. So then who were the ones who were called to be the sheep of our Lord Jesus Christ during that time? The apostles clearly state, we are the ones whom God has called. We don't come only from the Jews, but we also come from the Gentiles. Therefore, it is the Jews and the Gentiles who became members of the church that the Lord Jesus Christ built in Jerusalem in the first century who were the sheep of our Lord Jesus Christ during that time. The members of the church of Christ were the sheep of Christ then, but the other sheep of Christ are not from the Jews or the Gentiles who are non-Jews, who lived during the time of the first century of the Christian era. Brother Bernard, what is the proof that these other sheep of Christ are not contemporaries of the sheep that Christ had during the first century of the Christian era? What's the proof that the other sheep of Christ are from a different place and time? Well, for that answer, once again, we will turn to the Bible, to a verse that we have read previously. Let's go back and read again what is recorded in the book of John 10 and verse 16. I have other sheep too. They are not in this flock here. I must lead them also. They will listen to my voice. 
in the future there will be one flock and one shepherd. The first thing we want to point out is that we read again the prophetic pronouncement of our Lord Jesus Christ as recorded in the book of John 10, 16. This prophecy is regarding the other sheep of our Lord Jesus Christ. What is the proof that these other sheep are not the contemporaries of the sheep that belonged to Christ during the first century of the Christian era? The proof is our Lord Jesus Christ said, I have other sheep too. They are not in this flock here. Therefore, the other sheep are not included in the first century Church of Christ. So what is the proof that these other sheep of our Lord Jesus Christ are from a different time? The Bible is clear. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, I have other sheep too. And in the future, there will be one flock and one shepherd. So, Brother Bernard, what you're saying is that the other sheep of our Lord Jesus Christ didn't belong to the same time and place of the Jews and the Gentiles who were already called into the Church of Christ during the time of the first century. They would come from a different time and place. But in spite of that, they are still Christ's sheep, although they would come from a different time and place. They are still the Church of Christ. Well, Brother Rod, from where and when would the other sheep of Christ emerge? Uh, allow me to read to you again, Brother Johnny, to answer that question, as we always ask the question and read the answer from the Scripture here. In the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 39, and I quote, For it was to you that the gift was promised, to you and your children, and to all those in distant times and places whom the Lord our God calls to Him. What we have just read is a statement made by the apostles based on what the apostles said here, what we can learn about the church that was built by Christ, the church that He built is composed of three groups of people. Why are we sure about this? Because the apostle said, the promise is to you, the first group, and to your children, the second group, and to all those in distant times and places, the third group. Who is the first group? Based on what we read earlier in Romans 9, 24, they are the Jews who were members of the first century Church of Christ. And who is the second group? They are the Gentiles, who were also members of the first century Church of Christ. They were the sheep of Christ there and then. What about the third group? Who are they? They are the ones referred to as all those in distant times and places whom the Lord our God calls to Him. This third group, these are the other sheep of Christ. But Brother Rod, where would these other sheep of our Lord Jesus Christ, this third group, emerge from? According to the teaching of the apostles, they would come from or emerge from distant places. And when would the other sheep or this third group emerge or appear? According to the apostles, once again, the Lord God will call them at diff distant times which was reinforced by the prophecy of our Lord Jesus Christ when He said, in the future there will be one flock. Well, dear friends, who are the ones referred to in the prophecy in the Bible as the other sheep of Christ, who would be called in the future at distant times and at distant places? That's what we'll talk about next. After the break, stay with us. The Iglesia de Cristo International Edition will continue. Welcome back, everyone, to the Iglesia de Cristo International Edition. We have been learning about the other sheep of our Lord Jesus Christ. So for us to be recognized by Christ as His, well, we need to be counted among the other sheep of Christ, whom He spoke about in the Bible prophecy recorded in John 10, 16. Brother Philip, our question now is this. Who are the ones referred to in the prophecy as the other sheep of Christ who would be called in the future, at distant times, and at distant places. 
Well, Brother Johnny, in a related prophecy regarding those other sheep of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible further identifies them this way. And we can read here in Isaiah 43, 5 and 6. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your descendants from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not keep them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. How are these other sheep of our Lord Jesus Christ further identified according to this prophecy written in the Holy Scriptures? Well, they are considered as the sons and daughters of our Almighty God. And they would come from a far place, uh, a far place there in the east. According to the Holy Scriptures, they would also emerge from the time ends of the earth. Uh, Brother Bernard, what is the east being referred to as the place of emergence of the other sheep of Christ who are also the children of God? Where in the east would they come from or emerge? For clarification, Brother Johnny, let's go back to the prophecy. Let's read again Isaiah 43, 5. And this is what we can read. Do not be afraid. I am with you. From the distant east and the farthest west, I will bring your people home. What is the east being referred to? As the emergence of the other sheep of our Lord Jesus Christ, who are also the children of God, the Bible is clear, from the distant east. So therefore, the other sheep of our Lord Jesus Christ, who are also the children of God, they would emerge from the distant east. In fact, if we read in another translation of the Bible, as translated by Dr. James Moffat, we could read, from the Far East, the Far East or the distant East. This is the distant place where the other sheep of our Lord Jesus Christ, the third group, those who are children of God, this is where they would emerge from. Now, Brother Rod, which country is the fulfillment of the distant East or the Far East mentioned in the Bible prophecy as the place of emergence of the other sheep of Christ? Let us read from the book, uh, Brother Johnny, entitled Asia and the Philippines, which was written by Horacio uh, de la Costa. This is stated in his book on page 169. It cannot be without significance that the country which stands almost at the geographical center of the Far East, the Philippines, should also be that in which Christianity has taken the deepest root. Which country is the fulfillment of the distant East, as recorded in the Holy Scriptures, or the Far East, mentioned in the prophecy, as the place of emergence of the other sheep of Christ? It is the Philippines. What does this book say about the Philippines? It is the country which stands almost at the geographical center of the Far East. So the distant place or the distant East from which the other sheep of Christ would emerge is the Philippines. Brother Bernard, what about the time for the emergence of the other sheep of Christ? Our Lord Jesus Christ said that they would be made one flock in the future. The apostles said that they would be called at distant times. Well, when would that be? Well, Brother Johnny, that was also mentioned in the prophecy of Isaiah as recorded in Isaiah 43, 5 to 6. At the end of the passage, God says, Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Therefore, the time of the emergence of the other sheep of our Lord Jesus Christ, that third group who are also the children of our Almighty God, they would emerge from a time that is referred to as the ends of the earth. Well, you know, Brother Philip, our viewers would probably be wondering, well, what time is referred to as the ends of the earth? When is the ends of the earth, which is the time for the emergence of the other sheep of Christ in the Philippines? Well, we can get the answer here in Matthew 24, 3 and 33, when the apostles approached our Lord Jesus Christ and asked him just that. Let's read Matthew 24, 3 and 33. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be, 
And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. The disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ approached him. They asked him what would be the signs that would indicate his return or the end of the world. The response of our Lord Jesus Christ was, he said, when you see these things, these things would be a sign that the end of the world is near. The day of judgment is near. Thus, the expression ends of the earth as used in the prophecy of Isaiah 43, verse 5 and 6, refers to time. The time when the end of the world is already near. That is the time Christ referred to when he said that the other sheep would become one flock in the future. That is the time the apostles also referred to when they spoke about the third group, Christ's other sheep, being called at distant times. It is at that time when the other sheep of Christ would emerge from the Far East or from the Philippines. Brother Bernard, in the verses that read Matthew 24, 3 and 33, our Lord Jesus Christ spoke of visible signs, telling us that the end of the world is near. Well, what signs did Christ say would be seen when the end of the world is already near? Well, Brother Johnny, for those signs, let's go back to the same chapter, Matthew 24, but this time in verses 6 to 8, and please listen to the Lord Jesus Christ. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. What are the signs given by our Lord Jesus Christ? So that we would know that we are in the time being referred to as ends of the earth or the time where the end of the world is near. Our Lord Jesus Christ clearly said, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Not only that, there will be famines, there will be pestilences and earthquakes in various places. So what should we realize? when these signs that our Lord Jesus Christ gave are seen during our time. The Bible says, when you see all these things, know that the end is near, even at the very doors. In other words, when we see these signs taking place, then we should know that we are at the time ends of the earth. Well, Brother Rod, here is a very important question, probably on the minds of those who are watching the program. Have these signs given by the Lord Jesus Christ, recorded right here in the Bible, have these signs already taken place? And if so, when did they begin to take place? Let us read from the last day's Bible, from the footnote for Matthew 24, verse 6, continuing to verse 8. This is what it says. Jesus tells his disciples, however, to be awaiting a specific time during which all of these phenomena would be in evidence at the same time. The first such time in world history occurred during the years of World War I from 1914 to 1918 and immediately following have the signs that Christ gave in Matthew 24, 6 to 8, as signs that the end of the world is near already taken place? Yes, they have. When did they start to take place? According to what we've just read, Jesus tells his disciples, however, to be awaiting a specific time during which all of these phenomena would be in evidence at the same time. The first such time in world history occurred during the years of World War I, from 1914 to 1918, and immediately following. The First World War broke out, according to many historians, on July 27, 1914. Thus, in 1914, time was already at the 
ends of the earth. And it was at that time the other sheep of Christ would emerge from the Far East or from the Philippines. Well, Brother Philip, the question is, did that happen? Was the prophecy about the other sheep of Christ emerging from the distant or far east, the distant place, at the ends of the earth, the distant time in the future, fulfilled? Indeed it was, brother. This prophecy was fulfilled in the Iglesia de Cristo when it appeared in the Philippines, which is in the Far East, and was registered with the Philippine government on July 27, 1914, which, take note, was concurrent with the outbreak of the First World War. Therefore, beloved brothers, it is the members of the Iglesia de Cristo, the members of the Church of Christ, who are the other sheep of our Lord Jesus Christ. We do not merely claim that we belong to Christ, nor do we merely claim that Christ recognizes us as His. However, it is our Lord Jesus Christ Himself who knows and recognizes the Iglesia de Cristo, the Church of Christ, as His other sheep. So as the members of the Church of Christ in the first century Church of Christ were recognized by our Lord as His sheep, the same goes for the members of the Church of Christ which emerged in the Philippines in 1914. We are the other sheep of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are the children of our Almighty God in these last days. So if people want to be recognized by Christ today as His, they need to be included in the Church of Christ. They need to be members of the Iglesia de Cristo, which, by the way, is commemorating its 103rd anniversary. And for the parade of victories that our Lord God has blessed the Iglesia de Cristo with in all of its works the past 103 years, as we have always been taught by our executive minister, all thanks and praise be to our Lord God. So, dear viewers, to answer the questions, does the Iglesia de Cristo belong to the Lord Jesus Christ? Is this church Christ's church? Well, based on the Bible, the answer is yes. And as we come to the end of this program, we would like to share with all our viewers a very important message. Let's hear this inspiring message of our executive minister, Brother Eduardo Vimanalo, which all of us members of the Church of Christ should always bear in mind. Sa atin ng Diyos, pagkakanyang gawain, kamanghamangha, kagilagilalas. Pero kung mulaan niya doon lamang sa karunungan ng mga tao, ito anya ay mapapawi, ito anya ay maglalaho. Mga kapatid, Ito ang aking tanong sa inyo. Ito ang ating isipin sa nangyayaring ito sa Iglesia ni Kristo at sa nangyayari sa ibang mga relihiyon. Alin ngayon ang tunay na relihiyon na sa ating Panginoong Diyos? Tama. Totoong ang ating pagka-Iglesia ni Kristo ay totoong sa ating Panginoong Diyos. Salamat sa Diyos, sa loob ng isang daang taon, ipinagkalob niya sa atin ang kanyang mga pagpapala. Dumaan man tayo sa mga malulungkot na panahon sa ating pagkaiglesa ni Kristo, hindi lamang dahil sa mga pagsubok, hindi lamang dahil sa mga pag-uusig, hindi lamang dahil sa mga kahadlangan, kundi maging ng pumanaw ang sugo at maging ang kapatid na Eranyo Manalo na namahala sa atin sa loob ng iglesia. Akala natin siguro ang iglesia ni Kristo ay hindi na makapagtataguyo. Subalit, pinatutunayan sa atin ng ating Panginoong Diyos hanggang ngayon ang gawain ito ay hawak ng kanyang kamay. Siya, ang tunay na Diyos na Diyos nating mga iglesia ni Kristo. Siya may hawak sa gawain ito na ating kinaaniban. Tayo ay mga tunay na hinirang ng ating Panginoong Diyos. 
Dear friends, from all of us here on the Iglesia de Cristo International Edition, we join with all our brothers and sisters around the world in extending thanks and praise, in giving thanks and glory to our Almighty God for all the blessings He has given to the Iglesia de Cristo these past 103 years. Well, that's all the time we have for today. We'd like to thank Brother Rod Bruno in Toronto, Canada, Brother Bernard Daos in San Francisco, California, and Brother Philip Velasquez in London, England, for giving us Bible-based answers so that as the Apostle Peter said to the members of the church, you will be ready to speak up and tell anyone who asks why you're living the way you are, which we can read in 1 Peter 3, 15. Well, that does it for us here on the Iglesia de Cristo International Edition. We hope you'll join us again next time. I'm Jenny Martin, and thank you so much for watching. But before we end the program, we invite you to join us for a short prayer. Our loving and merciful Father in heaven, yes. from the bottoms of our hearts, we offer unto you once more our thanksgiving. Yes. And for this peaceful time yes. to be able to communicate with our fellow man through this program that they may know and come to understand more about the Church of Christ. Amen. Thank you, dear God, for your many blessings throughout the 103 years of the history of the Church, yes. for all the victories that you continue to give her. May your blessings that you have given to the church also be felt and experienced by our fellow man Amen. who are also watching this program. May you yeah. bring them, Father, to your holy church. Amen. May they hear more of your teachings. Yes. And may they be with us in serving and glorifying your holy name. Amen. And greatest of all, dear God, may they be with us in the salvation and everlasting life that you have promised. Amen. We trust, Amen. dear God, that you hear our prayer. Yes. You continue to bless the church. Yes. You continue to bless the church administration, yes. that we may be as one before your holy sight. Amen. For Amen. all these we beg to you, our God, through the very precious name of your Son and our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.